Oh, going on guys, EC here, and today we're going to be talking about Atari's acquisitions and investments during the, month, during the year of 2023, and what we could see in 2024, and what I feel about these acquisitions, so let's talk about it. Let's start with the investments guys, they made three investments during the uh, year of 2023, those are Play Margie, who made the Polymega home console, Anstream Arcade, and Tiny Build. Now we're going to start with Tiny Build because it's the easiest one and it's the most recent one, so Tiny Build is obviously the biggest one, but they've obviously done the investments in all acquisition of uh, Tiny Build is a huge game publisher, tons of games like Hello Neighbor, and I will say Atari hasn't actually fully acquired a stake yet, uh, basically what's happening is they have to take, uh, Tiny Build shareholders are taking a vote on January 18th whether or not to allow the capital increase and it would include the Atari stake and all that hollow blue, so we will hopefully hear in January what's going on with Tiny Build. Then we have Anstream Arcade who they only own 10% of, 10% of Anstream Arcade is quite an interesting one because Anstream it's quite an interesting service. It's a retro games subscription service. That's obviously cloud gaming. There's over a thousand games on there. I think it's pretty cool. I, I do like using Anstream Arcade myself. So I can't wait to see what they do with Anstream in the future. Hopefully more Atari games though. Then we have Play Margie who made a Polymega. Which they own a 49% stake in. Which is a pretty big stake. That's nearly half the company. Well it's essentially half the company. And I do think this is quite an interesting one as well. I would like to see what Atari is going to do with Polymega. Because they are obviously working on the Polymega app. We shall see what comes from that in the future. Now, so got, now let's get a look, look at the acquisitions. And we're going to start by looking at Atari Age because it's the, it's the most obscure out of, out of them. And what I mean by that is because it's the most it's the one that doesn't really fit the build as much. Because Atari Age, for those who don't know, is a more, it's more like a Reddit site. It's like a um, so, so, so social media forum uh, for Atari and retro gaming. I think it's pretty interesting to see this one get acquired by Atari. But it does obviously strengthen the relations between Atari and, in, and homebrew developers. Which could be good for the Atari VCS and other platforms. And obviously, as well, maybe Atari publishes some of the Atari VCS. Uh, well, maybe Atari publishes some of those homebrews on other platforms like the Atari 2600 Plus. So that's quite interesting. Then we have the two studios, Digital Eclipse and Night Dive Studios. Digital Eclipse is the bigger one out of the two. But we're going to start with Night Dive Studios. Night Dive Studios is best known for early masters of games like Turok and System Shock. They also find a hugely uh, successful Tur uh, System Shock remake, which came out recently. Uh, back in May, pretty fun game, pretty good game, nice, uh, it gives you a lot of Doom 2016 vibes, I'm glad that was uh, one that Night Dive published, then we have Digital Clips, Digital Clips is just known for making retro game compilations like Atari 50, emulation technology, and obviously making their own little homebrew sort of indie sort of games, like the Atari Digital Clips arcade games, I think they're an interesting pick up as well, nice little addition to Atari, obviously expands their capabilities to produce more games, and I do think both these studios were good picks. Then we have the game libraries that Atari acquired. So there are three game or four game libraries, so we're going to talk about them. So first we're going to start with is the smallest one of the four, and that's also Nauts and Swords and Shields, which they bought from Ronimo or Ronimo or however you pronounce it, games. They basically went bankrupt earlier this year, and Atari came in and bought Awesome Nauts and Swords and Soldiers from them. Which I think it was like three games that were included in the deal, which I don't know how much the deal was for. I, I do appreciate that they are bringing these, that they are preserving these uh, more legacy games. That I think the first one came out on the Wii. Then we had M Network. M Network is obviously an Atari is actually an old Intellivision publishing label that was used for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred back in the seventies. So for those who don't know, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred outsold the Intellivision one, uh, one to ten to one. So obviously, it, it made sense for Intellivision to publish games on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. The games that obviously we got were like games like Astro Smash, so pretty interesting pick. Uh, but we shall see what comes next from that. Then we had Berserk and Frenzy, and obviously other games from the Stern Electronic Stern Arcade Library. We don't know the full well, we, we do know the full list now, but we didn't know the full list when it first came out. But the, but the big ones they highlighted were Berserk and Frenzy, and I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's awesome that have these sort of more legacy sort of games that obviously had such a big impact because obviously first game with. Uh, Voice emphasis, huge, a hugely notable game in history, and I'm glad that's been acquired by Atari and they can preserve that. And the final one we want to talk about is the big catalog they acquired that included Bubsy, Hardball, um, Demolition Racer, and a few other games, and a load of other games. It was it was a hundred games that they acquired, and they we don't know how much they paid, but over a hundred games. That's quite impressive. Love to see that, and I'm interested to see what happens next. You know. Now, with Atari acquiring all these assets, I do think in 2024 we will probably see a slowdown in investments and acquisitions. I don't think they're going to stop. I think it's going to slow down a bit, and as they move from building, as they move from building, well, to obviously making money, that's that's what you got to do now. Now they've acquired all the stuff, you need to start making trying to turn it all profitable and making millions back because obviously Atari does lose money, but that's unfortunate. 
Now, I do also admit I am an Atari investor, so my take on this is quite a bit different. I do like the fact that Atari is growing, but I want to see them continue to grow. I want to see them invest in new ideas, new projects, and I want to see what happens. So, let me know what you guys think. Down below, I think my podcast, guys, it's a podcast on Spotify. It's totally free if you want to check it out. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment, turn notifications. I've been EC, and I'm signing out. Peace.